Welcome back to the channel. My name's Tom, and today I've got more from the Brimfield Flea Market. Let's see what else we can find. This caught my eye right away. This is an original Teddy Ruxpin from 1985. He actually works. Does he? He was working earlier. Lots more coal in this cave over here. We started carrying the coal to the airship. After we had made several trips, we had almost enough coal, and it was starting to get dark. Mouth isn't moving. Your mouth should do it. Yeah. Gee, it's getting dark. Well, he comes with two books, and then he's got the tape inside. Yeah. How much you asking on that? <sighs> Throw me an offer. I don't know. Without it working, I wouldn't. I don't know. I don't want to lowball you or anything. Oh, give me an offer. I, I would probably. Twenty bucks sound good. Twenty. Yeah. Yeah, for this, for this in the, um, yeah, in the, the tape? Yeah, the 20? Yeah. Yeah, I'll do 20. All right. Sounds good to me. It's not fully working, but 20 is not a bad Very price. Exciting. I can huh? probably fix it up, and if I wanted to, I could probably resell it for two to three times that easily, if not more. Here's probably one of the biggest selections of plastic lunch boxes I've seen before at a flea market. These are mostly from the mid to late 80s, some early 90s. Before this, they were all metal lunch boxes, but the metal ones started to get banned between like the 70s and the mid 80s because a lot of parents thought that kids would use them as weapons at school. And I actually remember that happening way back when I was in elementary school. We used to have metal lunch boxes, oh, yeah. and then one year, maybe like 84, 85, we weren't allowed to bring them in anymore. Which is one of the reasons why the metal lunch boxes are worth quite a bit of money. In my opinion, I think this vendor has some of the best selection and best prices at Brimfield for toys. There are a lot of other vendors that have probably just as many toys, but they tend to be a lot more expensive than this one. Um, you know, not everything here is cheap, of course, but I would say the prices are definitely reasonable. Which you can't say about all the vendors. Uh, yeah, I got one. Doesn't look like that, though. I think those might be originals. Actually, I think those are sleeping bags. I think it, they're sleeping bags. Sleeping bags, yeah. Yeah. One's 80s, one's 90s. And don't forget, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment, and hit that notification bell. Thanks. And then mixed in with all the toys, he's got a great selection of old computers here. We got an old Apple Mac from probably 85 to 90, depending on what model it was. I'm not, I didn't quite see the exact model number. And then you've got a Commodore 64C right there, which is a later version of the Commodore 64. The uh, original Commodore 64 was brown, and it kind of looked like a bread bin. It was rounder and thicker than that. And those are slightly less common than the original bread bin version. But um, I've got so much Commodore stuff at home that I really don't need any more at this point. Okay. What are you asking on the Commodore? Uh, so two fifty for everything there. Okay. They get both printers, the box of games, yep. the mouse, the modem, okay. the mass drive. 250 for everything there is not bad um, if the Commodore works. The problem is a lot of the Commodore 64s, in my experience, do not work. I bought, I think, six or seven of them, and out of those, two worked. You can fix them, but you usually have to actually replace pieces of the hardware to get them to work. 
So if you're concerned about that, I would definitely see if you can hook one up to a TV and see if it works before you buy it. This is a Tomy Cosmic Clash Mini Arcade from about 1982. The prices on these are okay. fairly inconsistent. On eBay, they sell for as little as $25 up to about $70. So it's, it's really hard to say what they're actually worth. But they're a lot of fun. I used to have one a lot like it back in the 80s. I had the driving version. It basically looked like this, except it had a little steering wheel on it. Don't know what I did with it, though. I can't imagine I threw it away or sold it, but I cannot find it. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> What's that little guy thing? Penguin. Yeah. Here's a bunch of My Little Ponies from the 80s. And for girls' toys back in the 80s, these were very popular, along with like Rainbow Bright, Strawberry Shortcake. That's Those were the big three, I remember. And then, of course, for boys, the equivalent was G.I. Joe, He-Man, and Transformers. <laughs> Garbage Pail Kids. These were very popular back when I was in elementary school, around 1985 or so is when they came out. So I would have been in, I think, second or third grade, something like that. And during lunch, everybody would be trading these. I guess the equivalent today would be something like Pokemon, except these were not a game. You just collected them. There was no game associated with them, really. And nowadays, the first and second series are worth quite a bit, especially the first series. And I've been trying to get a complete set of the first series in near mint condition, and it's really hard. They are extremely expensive if you want them in, you know, decent condition. And he was asking $3 each for those, which is probably not a horrible price, even though it does sound a bit expensive. That is about what they go for. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of this or not. You see to the left there on that table is that old computer. Somebody turned it into a piece of art, I guess. And I kind of like the art to an extent, but I'm kind of sad that they did that to that computer. Mm -hmm. Looks like an early to mid 80s IBM AT or XT. It's interesting though. I love these wood sculptures. These are here pretty much every year at Brimfield, but they are very much out of my price range. I believe they go for minimum very high hundreds to a few thousand dollars each. So way beyond my price range, but it's fun to look at them, that's for sure. <laughs> I know I've said this before, but I always wonder where the people find these old traffic signals. Like, do they auction them off, or does the town just throw them away? That one there is made out of plastic, so I'm thinking that one's fairly modern. But uh, you see those all over the place at these flea markets. Along with traffic signs, of course. I told him a hundred times how much this all I know how much they are. I don't remember. 
I know. I love this old boat here. It looks a lot like the one from a couple videos ago, which I think turned out to be a 56 Alumacraft. And this one looks almost identical, except it's yeah. missing a steering wheel. Yeah. It's got a space for a steering wheel, but that one's missing it. It's a nice old Airstream trailer here. Here's another great toy vendor. Amazing selection, but I would say the prices are like full retail. So what you'd expect to pay in a toy store or eBay. But there's a lot of stuff here you just don't see that often. Like right in the center there, you got the Unicron, that yellow transformer with the horns. And then these here, interchangeables. I've never heard of these. Cosmic Warp Chamber. Definitely from the 80s, but uh, I do not recognize those at all. Here's a Viper from Battlestar Galactica. This would have come out in about 1978. He's got 150 bucks though on it, which is high. Um, I checked eBay and the prices again very wildly, but they range from about 40, 50, 60 on average up to some of them for over 100. But 150 would be like the very high end of what they go for. There's a couple original Castle Grey Skulls and Snake Mountain from Masters of the Universe back in the early 80s. And the thing you got to watch out with those is a lot of them are sold as just the shell. They're missing their innards. So the price for a shell is going to be in the $40, $50 range. But if you get it complete, it's probably going to go for over $100. So does anybody out there know what these are? I was thinking they're light switch covers, but they're the wrong shape and there's no screw holes. I don't know. I do not know. This is a give a show projector from about 1963. And from what I can tell, they had a whole bunch of different versions of this with different characters. This one's the Superman version, which I did not see any that had sold on eBay, so I'm not sure what that one is worth, but most of the others from that era only go for about $20, $30, $40, so they're not really that expensive. There are some exceptions, of course. As you may know, I'm really into dogs, especially Boston Terriers, so I was kind of interested in this pillow until I heard the price. The pillows are 55 or two okay. for 100. They come with a form, with a filler, and each one has a zipper on the bottom that you mm -hmm. can remove it and wash it. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. thanks. Yeah. So in case you missed what he said, it was 55 per pillow or two for 100. Let me know in the comments if you think that's a good price.
This part of the flea market has a lot of vintage furniture. I would say most of this is probably from the 70s. Also 50s and 60s mixed in, but that couch looks 70s to me, maybe even 80s. A lot of it is fascinating to me just because you don't see this type of furniture much anymore, so it looks really exotic almost, even though back when it came out, it was probably just average common furniture that nobody really thought much about for the most part. I'm assuming these were used by tailors when they were working on pants. Can't think of anything else they could possibly be. This is a Tomy Omnibot 2000 from about sometime in the mid 80s. And I would say this is like the name brand version of the Radio Shack Roby and Roby Senior. It's kind of like the one I had, but yeah. bigger actually. I was saying yours wasn't that big. No, it's like maybe half the size. This one's a little bit too yellowed for my liking, but they can go for quite a bit of money. I saw one on eBay that looked to be in about that condition, sell for about four hundred seventy-five dollars. This is probably the most model airplanes I've ever seen before in one place. I was really interested in buying some of these, but a lot of them were broken, like the landing gears would be broken off, or the propeller would be broken off. There were a few that seemed to be relatively intact, which I was really considering buying, but they're so fragile that I just didn't want to carry them around the show, because I was afraid I would break them. So I was thinking I might come back at the end of the show to pick one up, but for whatever reason I forgot and didn't do that. So. If they're there next time, and if they're not broken, I may potentially buy one. No, I know there was a bunch. Yeah, can I stop it? Yeah, I heard of them. I'm looking in there. Right. You know, I think so. Yeah. You know, this is where I, I, uh, I scan to try to find the first. Look at the wrong way. Oh, right. Little jukeboxes. Yeah. Here's an old VHSC camcorder with some of the original tapes in it. And these appear to be old home movies, so hopefully there's nothing too personal on there. Hmm. I wonder if they still have people's videos on them. Mm. Birds Winter. Here's another one of those phones that most of you probably know I really like. I don't have one in green yet. This one he's asking 30 bucks for though, which is a little bit more than I'm willing to pay. I'm, I've kind of set my limit at about 15 on those. With some rare exceptions. No, I haven't, I haven't been. If you're a hardcore collector of antique phonographs and record players, this is definitely the booth to come to. It's definitely the best selection of old phonographs I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. And it worked. Yep. Yeah. 
symphonium. Oh my. It's like a big music box. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it looks like all the things are warped. Yeah, I think um, I mentioned that in one of my videos before yeah. and somebody said they're supposed to be like that. Is that right? Apparently. Because, yeah, actually, you see, they're up on these ridges here. Um. Oh, so that helps. It must be, it for some reason. Yeah. Not cheap, though. No. 2700 These are 78 RPM records, but they're picture discs. Oh. I didn't know they made those like that. No. Yeah, I had always assumed that picture discs were a modern thing. I've seen records that are picture discs, but they've all been from like the 80s, 90s, and newer. So I really didn't even know they had the technology to do this back then. It's pretty amazing. If you need any help with that, lower anything over here, I'm just... Okay. Okay. Thanks. I'll do 25 each of them. Okay. There is another Thanks. box of harder to get ones here that are about double that. Okay. Thanks. Hmm. Now I could be wrong, but this looks like an old Mazda Miata that somebody turned into a trailer. If that's another model car than a Mazda Miata, let me know in the comments, but that's what it looks like to me. So here's another vendor that has really amazing stuff. Great old toys, collectibles, but again, I would say his prices are full retail. I think that would be the best description. Yeah, I was going to say, just to bring this to the show, without a break. Yeah. No, I knew there was a bunch. Yeah, imagine having to move this display case around from show to show. That thing's got to weigh minimum hundreds of pounds, if not over a thousand. Yeah, Yeah, I heard of I guess this is where he puts the cheaper stuff. He's got a bunch of old Hallmark ornaments here, which I have most of those actually, and then a bunch of Hess trucks. The prices were fairly reasonable on these. Right. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. You know, this is where I, I, I stand to try to find the bird. The wrong way to find it. Pretty sure I had this at one point. This? This. Yeah, Joe, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I had that when I was a kid. No, I knew there was a bunch. 
This guy has a lot of great stuff in the case there. In the back there, you can see those Voltron Vehicle Force figures in their original boxes. Those are fairly uncommon. You see the complete set fairly often, but the individual sets like that are not nearly as common. And there we've got some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle figures. And on the bottom we have some old Star Wars figures, which are very valuable. This is a Mattel Marvel Super Heroes Secret Wars Spider-Man in the Black Costume action figure from about 1984. I kind of think the price on this has got to be a joke. It seems to say $5,500. But from what I can see on eBay, these are worth a bit of money, but they tend to sell for under $200, so I'm not sure what that's about. Because I was thinking, well, maybe it's $55, but that would be way too cheap, and then $550 would be too expensive. So, yeah, I'm guessing that's got to be a joke. I'm hoping. Anybody know who these people are? Wonder who those people are. No, I'm guessing they were deans or something. Yeah, probably. You find it? Oh, jeez. <laughs> It's 125 for this. So I don't know. I don't know how to tell if it's vintage or if it is modern because mm. it's just plastic in a like molded plastic. Right. <laughs> beast. <laughs> Oh, jeez, almost lost it. Wow. That's barely in there, too. Yeah. It weighs nothing. The sticker on this poster says Vintage Batman and Robin poster for $45. I would guess that's probably from when the original series came out back in 1967 or so. It's not in the best condition, but it's old. Remember you said these? Yeah. That's a minute we went down. And there you have it. That's the end of part five of the May 2023 Brimfield Flea Market. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment, and hit that notification bell. I'm going to have at least a few more parts of this video, as well as many other flea market videos coming up. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.